I have small brain. Under the trees, I found a box of black pearls. I couldn't believe that it could change our known world. Under the stars. So why have I got such small brain energy? Well, in that clip we just watched, I went around through a forest and to the beach taking photos with this, the Zorgi 2C, and I spent a lot of time composing those shots and making sure the focusing was just right, only to find that they all turned out like this. Now why did this happen? Was it A, because I had the shutter speed set too high, making the photos just come out black? B, because I had the lens cap on the whole time, or C, because I did something even stupider than those two things. If you picked C, then you'd be right, because I did something much more stupid than that. I somehow managed to put the film in backwards. <coughs> I, put, I put the film in backwards. I, I put the film in backwards. Now, how did I manage to do that? Well, small brain. But after I shot with that roll, I did load up Kodak C200, which I managed to actually load in correctly. So we do have some shots from that. But before I start talking about the specifics of the Zorki 2C, let's have a quick look at its history. In 1926, the FED factory in Kharkiv, Ukraine, was a home for children orphaned due to the conflicts of the First World War, the Revolution, and the Civil War. It was named after Felix E. Jerzynski, who founded the secret police. Then it was turned into a labor commune. Its features included child labor. They made electric drills, then a camera they hoped no one would notice was a copy of a Leica. The national paper said, this is a Soviet Leica. Now bro, FED said. Then came World War II, so FED, FLED, they're building. Having no factory of their own, they stood into KMZ's DMs and started production together. Until FED said, I am a head out. KMZ replied, fine, I'll make my own cameras. Which they did, sticking with the Zorki name. So the Zorki 2C is a rangefinder camera. So if you look at the back, we have our viewfinder, and then beside it is the rangefinder. When you look through this, you're going to see a zoomed up version of what you're pointing at. Then when you twist the focus dial, you'll get this opaque yellow layer crossing in over the top of it, and as it gets into the center, you'll be in focus. So I found it to be a really interesting way of taking photos because you're kind of hopping back and forth between the viewfinder and the rangefinder. So I would look through the viewfinder uh, to just to frame up the shot, then I'd look through the rangefinder and I'd try to focus it, but then I'm thinking in my head, did I move slightly? So do I need to go back, check the viewfinder again, and then go back into the rangefinder? And I found myself doing that quite often, and in some of the shots you're going to see later, you'll see that I didn't nail the focus sometimes. So I think it's something that you really need to get used to. Uh, a lot of people love these cameras so much, and I kind of get why they would, because you really feel more connected with the shots that you're trying to frame up and get in focus. It takes a lot more energy and a lot more thought. So let's take a look at the lens. This is a 50mm f1.3. Now the great thing about these cameras is that you can use any old Leica lenses on them too. So while the body is quite cheap, you can get those expensive lenses on eBay, which is something that I'm going to try and do. In order to set our focus, we're twisting this ring here. And then in order to set the aperture, we have this smaller ring on the outside to twist. So on the top here, we have the name, it's a Zorki 2C. And if we take a look at the back here, we can see the serial number. So the first two digits, the 58, indicate that this camera comes from 1958. Over on the right hand side here is our knob to cock the shutter. Then we have our shutter release. And just here is how we set our shutter speed. But the important thing with these cameras is that you have to have the shutter cocked first if you want to change the shutter speed, otherwise you can damage some of the mechanical components on the inside. So now that I have the shutter cocked, I can lift this up here and we can change our shutter speed. And then this little lever on the bottom is a shutter delay for when you have your flash equipped. Then on the back we have our viewfinder, so we can use this to frame up our shots. And then on the left hand side is the actual rangefinder part of this camera. This is what you would look through to then set the focus with the focusing ring on the lens. And on the left we have our knob for winding the film. Then on the front here we have this lever that sets the self timer. And then that's activated by pressing this little button here. So 
So let's load up the camera with some film. So if you lift this up here and give it a twist, it'll take the back cover off. And then on the inside, you'll find this little spool. And that's what we're going to put our film around. So the film roll itself will go into this side and then the spool is going into here. So the film we're going to use here is Kodak Color Plus 200. Now for loading up the film, uh, you can put it in just as it is, but it does work a lot easier if you actually cut a piece of the film. So I'm going to show you how you do that. So we're going to need a scissors. We pull out our film about the length of the bottom of the camera. And then we can just follow this pre-cut area here and cut on up. Great, so now we can load this up into the camera. So what I'll do first is I'm going to wrap it around the spool. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to feed it into here. And we can see we have this pointy bit here, so I'm going to push it in. And then I'm going to try to get one of the squares wrapped in around. So there we have our film hooked in there quite tightly. Next is to load it into the camera, so we can get our film there. So the film and the spool goes in at the same time. I can just press it in there. This is very difficult to do with a microphone and camera in your face. <laughs> There. We push them both down simultaneously and they click into place there. Then we can put our back panel back on. Now we'll just twist the winder and I can feel I think it's already gripped it there but until we know that this part and this part are both moving while you're twisting the winder you can't be certain that the film has latched on so we'll keep going. So now you can see as I twist it they're all moving at the same time. So then this ring here with the arrow this indicates how many shots we have left in our film. So in order to set that, we cock the shutter first and then we can just pull it over until we have it resting at zero. So now if I take a shot and I twist it over, you can see that we're now on shot one. And I was lucky enough to get this leather case with the Zorky C2 logo embossed in on it. I think most of these cameras that you find on eBay will actually come with one of these nice leather cases. So let's have a look at some of the photos I managed to take with this camera. While I was out with this camera, I decided to stop by the seal sanctuary in Court Town, where I adopted a seal. They take care of the seals, sorting out any veterinary needs that they might have, uh, as well as then preparing them to get released back into the wild. So the particular seal that I adopted, we get to be there when it's released back into the wild, which I'll keep you updated on and we can get some footage of the release. Overall I can say that I am quite bad at using this camera, probably all rangefinders. You know, you could see in those shots that they just weren't very good, to be fair. But I did enjoy it. Um, it's going to take me a lot more practice to get good at using it. 
um, which I'm going to do because it's, it's really cool. I just love the whole design of the camera as well. So if you've ever used a rangefinder camera yourself, let me know in the comments. Uh, give me some tips, some advice, things that I need to know about using these cameras because I do like using it, I want to use it more, I want to get better at it and I'd really appreciate that. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.